Welcome to another unit in this VBA course. In this unit we are going to talk how we can write either information into some kind of files, particularly in text files, or how we can read information from these text files. And this is basically two well, problems, two topics at once. So let's work through this step by step. And let's start with the saving part, because this is a bit more complicated. So here, first off, I did some variables. I included some variables, which I declare, which I initialize. This is just preparatory work. Or in another case, this is something which I might need at some point for illustrative purposes. The only thing I really need, however, is the first one. I need to have one variable, which is a string variable. Because this string variable, in the end, will contain the path, the name, and the file type of the data file where I'm going to write to. And well, how do I get this? Well, first I need some kind of default name. Well, actually I don't, but always makes sense to write some kind of default name here. And then I'm going to use the Excel internal save dialog. So here, if I go with application, this means I'm referring back to Excel as a program. And I'm using get save as file name. That's a typical Excel save as dialog. Well, here, first part that I include is what will he display as default file name. That's here the problem. And the title, the caption of this corresponding dialog. Well, let's have a look how this looks if I actually run this problem up to this point. So I can press, press here, run. See, get my save as dialog. This reads save problem as text file. And here I have my default name of problem. So I could just write this here. However, at this point I'm pressing cancel, getting back here. And at this point, I see my file name does not contain anything. Well, I, obviously I pressed cancel. So this would be a first thing I need to consider here. I need to check what to do if someone presses cancel. So for example, I could add here an if clause, if file name is false, then don't do this stuff here. Only do this once he has entered a valid file name. I also have to account for a different aspect. What if I select a file name that already exists? That's something you might know. In this case, you will get an error message. Hey, this file already exists. Do you want to overwrite? This is something we would have to add here as well. So I would have to check, does this file already exist? If it exists, ask the user, do you want to overwrite? If he says yes, then overwrite. Else, do the same as with cancel. Well, this is a bit more work to be done. So at the moment, we will skip this. However, well, what we are going to do in the next step, assuming the user actually selected a file name, well, if he selected a file name, then this command returns into the file name variable the path and the name of the file. He does not already include the type of the file. So I have to add manually here the .txt if it should be a text format. Okay, I add the file ending manually, then I'm ready to go. I got my path, I got my name, I got my type. So I can open this specific file. Well, at this point, if I checked for the cancel part, this file exists. He built a new file at this point. I'm opening this file, so I go with open, then file name, so what is opened especially as well where it is, what is open. Then for output as, and this is just the name I'm going to use as my output flow. And well, if I want to write something into this, I'm just going with write, hashtag one, data one, comma data two. So I'm writing two data points here. If I'm using this format, just data point one, comma, data point two, comma, data point three, in my output file will also read comma. So we'll get a comma as separator. If instead, here I also have the example what to do 
if I have an array, so if instead I have an array and I use some kind of for loop to write all the entries from the array into my file, something like this here, well, in this case, he would just go write entry one, next line, entry two, next line, entry three, next line, and so forth. So here, my delimiter or my separator would actually be the next line. So the separators always depend on which way I'm going to use to write my data into my file. So this might also be important when I actually not only save the file, but later on open the file to read the data again. Because if I don't consider that there's a comma at this point, I might have a problem. Additionally, something else to consider, maybe I'm going to use a separator which is different from those commas or from next line or stuff like this. So whenever I want to use, let's call this artificial um, separators, I have to include them on my own. So I could go with like data 01, and then I could just add, next part which I write is hashtag. Then I write data2, hashtag. So the hashtag could later on be used as separator. But I have to include this at this point manually as well. And well, once I'm finished, I just close my data stream. And well, so much, so good. However, well, I just said I close my data stream. And this is something very important to keep in mind. I'm using something called a data stream here. So he always writes the next part, the next part, the next part, the next one. He's moving forward, continuously moving forward. So at this point, I'm not considering to move backwards and say like, okay, write this stuff, write this stuff, then jump back four units and then write this stuff. Well, to do this, this would be a bit more problematic. So I wouldn't recommend trying something like this. First, make sense of the situation, develop your data format, and then write one thing after another. And well, with saving, this usually is not this much of an issue. It's a big, bigger issue with the next part, with the loading part, with the opening and loading part, because there I also have to read all the information if I follow the typical data stream, one after another after another. I cannot just jump back and say, okay, this variable is at this position and the next one is a bit ahead and then other one is a bit in the back. So here I'm always, if I use the standard approach, which I would highly recommend, read one after another after another. Okay, so this was saving. So what about loading data, opening data? Well, the main part works the same as before. I have like default file name, then I use, in this case, the get open file name from Excel. So I get my get open dialog. I select a file. Again, what happens if I cancel? I have to catch this exception here on my own. Take care about this. Else I get a path and a file name. And I can open this as input. So same thing as with save. And if I'm actually reading from this, I'm not using write, I'm using input. But the same way as before, I can read single data points, I can read a whole array, so I can use different other aspects here, look similar to this one. However, the difference, this is write, this is input. And well, if I'm finished, I'm just using close to f close the data or the data file again. This was still from the German version. So if I close this, I cannot read anymore. I would have to open this again. And well, as I said, the same problem as before with saving the data occurs here as well. So if I'm using my own separators, I have to actually account for them as well. So here best I'm reading like one entry, one character, one number after another, after another, after another. Best to always do this with a string as well. Then when the separator comes, you stop. Then perhaps if this should be numbers, you transform the string back into a number. So that's the best way to go if you actually work with separators, which might be relevant. 
else if you know a tall data point separated in any of these typical ways as used with savings you could use the input as here so here in this case i just expect them to be one entry and this is the whole entry is data one okay and well this was all there was on opening saving text files writing data into text files reading data from text files and well if you want to see more on vba feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look in the corresponding playlist i say goodbye and see you next time